I wanted to ask you about Shea Weber. Uh, still, obviously, the captain of the Canadians, but we didn't hear from him much this year. And there was a lot of criticism that he was not at the, the Gila Fleur ceremony last uh, Sunday. So I know a lot of people, a lot of fans want to know why. Can you address that? And also, will you have a new captain in the fall? Um, you know, I, I'm aware that, that Shea's received a lot of criticism and we were away in, in, in Germany for, for some of that and missed his uh, ceremony as well. Um, Shea's situation is complex. There's, there's a number of issues, uh, some of which given in insurance issues, the league, whatever or not, that we're really not at uh, liberty to discuss. Um, Shea's been absent from the team. Shea's injured. You know, since I arrived in January, the understanding was Shea was not playing this season no matter what, that from an injury standpoint, he needed time to recover. I think it's highly unlikely that Shea Weber is going to be physically capable of playing again. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but we've had these conversations about whether we would trade his contract. If we thought he was able to come back and play, we probably wouldn't have had those conversations. Um, as far as Shea being there at the game on Friday. I think the issue and what we were really trying to do is it, it was intended to be a surprise for Pierre Gervais that, that the first his first captain and last captain were going to attend the game uh, on Friday. And then, you know, the, the plan all along was for that to occur. And then after Guy's passing, uh, Shea extended the trip to be able to, to be at the, uh, the wake and, and funeral as well. So, um, I don't know Shay really well, but everybody that I talk to around here and, and around the league say he's uh, a heck of a guy, a heck of a leader, and does kind of does things in the shadows. So, uh, you know, t to me, he's probably getting uh, unfairly criticized at some point. But I, I certainly respect everybody's right to an opinion. It, as far as leadership, I, I said it. I think early on, maybe in Colorado. Uh, when I first took the job, whether I expected to have a captain for next year, and I, I think uh, the plan, uh, my answer was yes, and, and I think that answer remains the same today. Um, we have not had significant discussion. I think Marty's brought uh, leadership to this team uh, from a coaching standpoint, and we're going to continue to evaluate here over, over this offseason what the right situation is for a leader, what our roster is going to look like, uh, you know, versus what it looks like today and what changes could be here and what, based on what that roster may look like, what the challenges would be for a leader. And then we're going to decide whether there's uh, who the right person is for that and or if the right person's ready for it at that moment in time and we'll make a decision. As far as our youngsters are concerned, the decisions that we will make in relation to where they play will be more based on what we believe is in their best interest developmentally than it will be on what the Montreal Canadiens as an organization need for for uh, game 3, 20, or 40 for that matter. So I, I fully expect that we will see uh, some of our young players in the lineup next year. I, you, know, you could see a player start in Montreal, go to Laval, come back up. It may not be predicated so much on their play as what we think we need from them uh, from a development perspective. We're not going to try to free up cap space for next season that costs us prospects or draft picks to make us better next year and then hurt us two or three years from now. So I guess at the end of the day, we're going to look at everything. We're going to, certainly we would like to, to gain flexibility uh, from a cap perspective, but we're not going to do anything that's going to sacrifice what the objective here is, which is to build a team that's capable of winning on a sustainable basis from year to year. When you say nothing to the detriment of what would be three or four years down the road, you obviously have contracts that last that long. Um, what is your stance on retaining money on some of those bigger deals if it facilitates a move? And allows you in the short term to create some cap space, even if it means having that dead money on your cap for that two, three, four years. It would depend on on what we are acquiring in terms of if we gain short term flexibility. What does it allow us to do? Right, it, it, it's a we're kind of 
discussing in an in abstract instead of in a concrete example. Um, at, at the end of the day, we're gonna we have to see where we're going with this group, what players are ready to take on in terms of responsibility. Uh, so if we trade somebody away and retain cap flexibility, and we got to go replace them with another player, and we and we ultimately save X dollars. What, what does it do for us, right? So it's we're going to explore a lot of different things here this summer, um, including trading Jeff Petrie, as we promised that we would. Uh, that would give us cap flexibility. You know, we have uncertainty around carry. If he can't play, we have LTI money to work with. You know, so there's a lot of different things that I can't come here today and say, boom, we're doing this, but if, if – we, if we knew more about Kerry's situation or when we know more about Kerry's situation, it's going to give us a little bit more of an indication as to what kind of cap flexibility we need or don't. So unfortunately, we have some gray areas here that once we have a better idea as to which way they're going, it'll help us understand where we 